difficult to measure progress both from an earthly standpoint and even from a heavenly standpoint jesus had to resurrect for us to establish the victory his dominion it, we could just believe blindly that well we've not seen him but we assume that he's defeated satan the resurrection was the seal of his authority that resurrection the empty grave today becomes an eternal result that his lord exalted above death hell the grave so never reject results results not only prove that god is almighty it also proves that your obedience is complete it proves that you are walking in keeping with certain principles hallelujah and of course you know that results are consolations to you there is nobody who will invest time energy intellect passion commitment over something that he does not plan to benefit him or benefit others the end of every effort and every pursuit is that results come out of it whether for your personal benefit or for the benefit of others hallelujah lives we're motivated by the fact that he's not just using us as a selfish god but that there are consolations to our christian experience if there were no consolations to our christian experience it would be safe to say god is selfish the presence of consolations that bless the believer while we serve the purposes of god is proof that he is just is proof that his love is proof that he cares about us so when we press ourselves to advance God's program for the unenlightened mind, that it bullying his creation to say, listen, if you don't support my program, I will kill you, I will defeat you. I hope you realize that our love for Jesus and the things that we do for the kingdom is not because we have no alternatives. It is the love of God that constrains us. It is not fear of being judged by God. It is even beyond fear of hellfire. Are we together now? Yes. You have a right as a believer. The condition to be with the Lord as far as heaven is concerned is not service. The condition is Jesus. Believing in the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. So it is possible that you can receive the life of Jesus and refuse as an act of your will that I do not want to be part of God's program. You will not go to hell. You will only be an inefficient believer. Are we together? That our love and our committal towards his program is a, our thank you gift for all that he did. Imagine if he said everybody who must receive eternal life must be someone who must sign that as soon as you are saved, you must serve me. He would be a selfish God. Are we together? So I think we need to understand this because sometimes when you see the passion of a believer towards the things of God, spending yourself and being spent for God, most people are motivated by fear. Fear as though there is a cruel and wicked God who is ready to deal with you and waste your life and destiny should you decide that you're not interested in his program. You can decide, even as a Christian, that I love you, but not enough to be interested in your program. He will respect your will. It is only that the blessings and the reward that follow those that serve will not be captured in your experience. So I want you to know that behind all that we do, the giving, the serving, the singing, the teaching, the ministrations is our love for Jesus, that we have options and yet we have chosen by the constraint of our love for him to spend ourselves and be spent of him. Are we together? Have that at the back of your mind. And this is the same philosophy that must be sold by every leader to the membership of any ministry. It is very evil when people now begin to be manipulated and using force and cruelty. 
at every point in your kingdom service you can be challenged you can be motivated you can be inspired you can be provoked unto godliness but never forced in terms of bending or manipulate your will everything that should be done in the house of god must be done from a standpoint of love revelation and passion for god and his house that is the kind of sacrifice and service that is acceptable hallelujah i just needed to say that so that um especially for the believer who is just starting his journey with god sometimes power of god um may look like madness when you see people who are really into the things of god it looks like they have nothing else to do with their lives it almost looks like a religious indoctrination as though something has happened to your sanity and you've thrown yourself and literally plunged yourself into the things of god now i must balance this by telling you that there is wasteful fanatism there is an angle to the christian experience that has been wrongly communicated and it looks like zeal it carries a semblance of zeal but that ends up leaving an individual frustrated wasted with no sense of profit not for himself nor the kingdom this is not what we're advocating there is there is a useful press that is by revelation with order and grace passion for god that has results to show the bible says oh taste and see that the lord is good hallelujah praise the name of the lord i think it was um was it during the uk conference i recall uh, teaching the reason as to why i believe that people uh, there was a growing disdain for the church especially um, across Europe and we identified a few reasons I recall number one I said that the reason why I believed that many believers or many people seem to frown and fold their mats as far as coming to church was concerned was number one because of character inconsistencies on the part of the vessels character inconsistencies and that also extends to extra biblical principles and practices practices that are inconsistent um, with the word of god i remember that number two i said that the absence of word-based intelligent life applicable teachings are we together that provide real solutions to people's needs i hope you realize that every time you are teaching people you are not acting a movie you are not acting as a pastor you are a pastor you are not acting as a man of god you are a man of god the members are not acting as members they are people who have come hungry to receive and let me tell you every man's need is his point of contact you must communicate truths that are number one word based number two intelligently presented number three life applicable there must be a point of application behind every sermon every teaching every communication that comes from this altar or any altar in god's mind the recipient should be able to know how they can apply that truth in their life to improve them to help them know god help them become better believers and generally to excel in life and destiny and number three i said in that conference how that the absence of the power of god to prove and defend the things we claim God can do. There are lots of spiritual propositions as to what we claim God is and what we claim he is able to do. And so as members continue to shout amen from Sunday to Sunday, Wednesday to Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, any other day at all that allows for these kinds of gathering. When people shout amen, they want their lives to capture testimonies that prove that God can do what he says. And if people remain indefinitely disappointed week after week with loud shouts of amen, without testimonies, without a proof of advancement in their lives, eventually they will be frustrated. Hallelujah.